Just give me a second. All right. Let me know once you guys can see my screen. Yes, you can. Yes, Krishna. So the first thing is, uh, I want to know how many of them are UI designers and how many of them are uh, UX on the call? Sorry, what was the question? How many of them are U only UI designers and how many of them are UX? As in, based on that, I wanted to uh, you know, uh, talk about the wireframing part as well. Uh, I am UI designer. Yes, me too, UI designer. OK. Uh, all right, so, uh, OK, devs, OK, TK. So the thing is, uh, on this call, uh, we uh, so we are going to do multiple sessions, OK? Uh, but in this one, uh, we are, uh, or I am going to concentrate on few plugins, which people can actually use. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, I'm going to concentrate on the stacking and uh, uh, especially, uh, you know, repeat grid. Okay, a lot of them don't use these things. So uh, those are the few things that we'll be concentrating on. And also in the uh, part of plugins, there are only two that we'll be concentrating. But eventually, in the next, you know, calls, probably we'll uh, add more uh, plugins that are kind of useful uh, to use, OK? If you guys have anything in between, so you can just keep you know, saying, speaking. This is my first session, so I might not be as perfect as it can be. Yeah? So you guys can uh, just unmute and speak if you want to. OK, so today, uh, as part of the plugins, uh, there are two plugins which I really wanted to talk about. Uh, one is a wide framework. And one is the charts, or you can. Uh, there's also busy charts. Uh, so what I noticed, or what we all notice, is every time that we are actually starting a new project, or we are working on wireframes, we are creating everything from scratch. Even the wireframes, we are kind of creating everything from scratch. So there's a plugin uh, which people can use. Uh, it's called uh, Wireframer. Uh, which has most of the elements that you need. It's pretty much like a UI kit, okay? Uh, which people can use uh, to create a wireframe, okay? Uh, maybe I'll just give you a small list of what uh, we have. Let's say, all right, here we have UI elements. Say this is the forms, okay? So the minute you select that, you actually have a complete form with the elements that are required for uh, the uh, wireframe, OK? These are not components. These are just normal layers. If you notice, these are uh, pretty much normal layers that you have uh, that were created. So because this is a wireframe, you don't need components and everything. So you have this plugin where you can use all the elements. You know, it's not just uh, you know the uh, form elements. You actually have a lot of options. Probably icons, typography, the bars, the button styles. So is okay. this uh, a, a, a this is a design uh -huh. or is it from inspect from material or any sort of framework? No, this is a standard design, I believe. So okay. this is just this is because just basic wireframe. It's for of. a wireframe. Okay. okay. I'm not even talking about the visual design part. So this is just for wireframe because what we do is we for even for the wireframes, we are creating everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. But where we actually have a lot of elements available throughout, you know, be it for sign up forms, be it for, uh, you know, charts or anything. Okay. Got it. So for uh, creating the wireframes, we can pretty much use this plugin. Okay. Whatever you want to create. Uh, yeah, of course, the colors are like you just have blue and white thing. If you prefer some other color, maybe you can just go and add your colors and kind of change to whatever you want eventually. Okay, but 
for a wireframe, you don't have to create everything from scratch. That's the only thing. That is how it, this would help. OK, this is one plugin uh, that uh, I wanted to share. And apart from that, there's one more plugin which I think most, so we have been working on uh, uh, a lot of data related, data analytics related projects of late. And we have been creating a lot of charts. Okay. And most of the time we are either creating it manually or taking a screenshot and, you know, from high charts and kind of placing it. So there are two plugins which I I kind of use, which is Visi Charts. This is a pretty simple uh, chart tool. Okay, I'll remove these two. Okay, select the artboard, and here you actually have only four, uh, three types of uh, charts that you can create. Okay, one is a donut or a, you know donut or a line chart or a bar graph. Okay, so you can customize it. You can. It's not like uh, it's a fixed one. You can give whatever data points that you need as in, okay, let's say right now it's a 60, 30 and 40 out of 100, okay? And I just click, it gives you the information. Okay, you can change your colors, whatever you want. You can manually select it and you can change your colors and everything. You This is customizable, okay? So maybe instead of 60, 40, no, 10 and this, I might think 50, 20, 10, Five and five, probably. You know, that add up mm, 70, 80, 90. Uh, again, another 10, probably. Mm. So, this is for a donut, and you actually have similar options for uh, uh, a line graph that you want. Okay. And then you have a bar graph thing. This is this plugin is kind of a simple one. Okay. Uh, again, this is not a component, it doesn't create a component. Uh, it's just a normal layered uh, structure, okay? So this is a simple version uh, plugin that we have. Then we have, which is ND charts. This is comparatively uh, a more complex, but it has a lot of things as in you can create a line graph, you have a column chart, you have bar graph, you have pie chart, you know, radar chart, you have a lot of options at the top. You can customize it as much as you want, okay? Uh, say, maybe for now, I'll just give this. Oops, sorry. I need to select the artboard. Select the artboard, or you can just put a layer, and you can just use that. You can, as I said, this is, again, customizable. When you're doing it, you can uh, customize your colors. You can customize everything. And you just click on it, and it kind of places the chart. Uh, sorry, on the uh, artboard. Okay, you can uh, again. Uh, when I say it is customizable, even the fonts. Uh, let's say I will go with uh, the same for now. Maybe I want to increase. Yeah, so this is not this is the point. These are the thing. Basic information. Yes, this is maybe I want 16. Uh, maybe the spacing is like two. Okay. Uh, and okay, we'll do this for now. Yeah, the only thing is maybe you will not be able to select the font that you want. Uh, okay, it gives you the sizes and everything. Uh, eventually, if you want to add, you can just go, you know, you can use the uh, character styles that we create and just align it, assign it to it. Okay. It uses the default font. Pretty much it is similar with uh, other, uh, what do you say, uh, charts as well. Okay. For bar graphs, for uh, say this one, this is a, a pie chart. Okay, maybe uh, for the pie chart. Okay, let me show this first. Yeah, sorry, my bad. You need to select the artboard or a layer and then kind of click for it to be implemented. Okay, again, for this also, you have the, you know, the size, colors, and text, everything that can be changed. Maybe this is a selected version. So, selected is, I'll show you what the selected is. So, this is, say, 
it's like you know this offset part maybe one of the uh, you know data points can be shown as a selected one it kind of gave that break okay hello am i audible yes 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 all right so uh, this is one of the plugins that i kind of came across so it has a lot of you can customize your colors and you can do everything that you want so instead of creating everything from scratch you can use uh, these plugins there are a lot of plugins so in probably the next session we will uh, you know kind of uh, select few uh, specific uh, plugins and kind of give a demo on how to use those things okay uh, yeah so this, these are the two plugins that i kind of use so i was just i wanted to show that okay and uh, apart from plugins uh, we are going to concentrate on uh, you know using a uh, using stacking I'm not sure how many of you actually use stacking. Uh, can you just, you know, say something? How, how many of you use that stacking feature on uh, XD? Yes, I have used. Yeah, wait. I have also used. Okay, and the repeat grid part. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So probably then this is for uh, you know it's not it's kind of for a beginners okay uh okay so one thing uh before we move to that you know uh i wanted to show one shortcut because i've noticed a lot of people don't use stacking or the uh what do you say uh you know, repeat grid or any of these grouping elements they don't use it because of the multiple clicks that they want uh, you know that they have to do okay and uh while working on uh, what do you say uh, the repeat grids or the stacking features say you have multiple uh, okay so this example i'm just giving you an example okay this is one thing that uh, i wanted to show so let's say this is a group okay we have a group with uh, multiple groups into it okay this is just a two level group that we have okay but the problem is people still a lot of people that we noticed they just go just because you don't want to do an you know double click and enter into the group they kind of ungroup everything and kind of work on it okay be it one group or maybe you know i kind of did 10 groups right now one two i kind of grouped it 10 times Or probably more. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I grouped it so many times. For general tendency of people is they can kind of kind of double click and kind of go into it. Uh, you know, there's a simple shortcut that you have to use. Click on control and click any layer that you want. It actually directly takes it. It doesn't matter if it is in 20 groups, subgroups. Click on control and click on whatever layer that you want. It directly takes you to that specific layer okay this i wanted to show because before i move to the uh the repeat grid and uh, stacking uh i wanted to show that feature because of that clicking thing okay all right so uh for the people who did not okay for even for the people who used the repeat grid uh how do you change your data or the information that is there let's say uh you have a table okay you kind of created a table with a name probably name let me i'm doing a rough one huh? by the way text blah 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 maybe another text um maybe a button pose that maybe a button okay uh, there are two maybe i have a button here okay
Okay. Imagine we just did this and uh, we are kind of creating a repeat grid out of it. Okay. How do you guys change the data for this one? Do you manually go and change for each layer or do you follow some kind of other process? There are ways, of course. I'm sure few of them know it, but I wanted to check with others as well. Manually. Everybody? No, I do it manually. Manually only. Yeah, manually. All right. OK, then Okay, we'll start. OK, so we'll start with stacking. Then I'll go into the repeat grid part. OK. Uh, stacking is pretty much like an auto layout feature that we have in Figma. Of course, uh, it's, you know, what it does is it kind of preserves the spacings between every element that you have. OK. Uh, I'm going to combine the stacking and the repeat grid uh, in this part. OK. All right. So imagine, uh, say this is 20. OK. I kind of remove this. Maybe a little light shade. OK. Now uh, I'm going to create a button. For this, also we will kind of give a heading. All right. Oh, sorry. Rounded corner. Now, the way stacking works is say I have a title. Then probably I have a description, which is not cool. Okay. And this is going to be a, say, a text area. OK, maybe I want this to be 14. Again, no bold. No, maybe let me give bold. This is again 14. OK. No. This is, uh, you know, let's say I group it. Click on stack. What it does, I'm sure pretty much everybody knows that, you know, what it does is that if I move everything, it kind of moves the data accordingly. Correct. So tomorrow, let's say the, the text area increases. Rest of the elements, you know, which are aligned with it, kind of move. Now, with this, we are going to combine the, uh, say, the repeat grid. Okay. I click on repeat grid. Okay, I'll show you the other ways also. Okay, for now, let's say I created a repeat grid. Maybe I want five of these. Well, let's say four. Let's do four. Okay. What we generally do is I know we kind of go and manually change it, but 
you know the way is you can use text files okay this text file say has names okay student one two three whatever it can be you know most of the time we kind of get the data in the excel i kind of copy it and put it in the text document this has a name this has the dummy data that i kind of put para one para two para three maybe i'll put another two into it okay this is yeah, okay then I have a score, then I have a subtext which I am using, which is this. Okay. All you do is instead of manually changing it, select your text file, drag and drop, and leave it at the title. See, it changed everywhere. And it actually takes the sequence in which it, it has in the text document. I don't have to change it manually throughout. Similarly, with uh, let's say the paragraph, see, para one, two, three, four is there. And I kind of gave us core probably. Now, the document had 10 names, 10 uh, paragraphs, and everything. I'll just increase the width of this one. Oh, sorry. I hope everything is clearly visible. Huh? All right. Yes. Now I did five. I did this way. See this? It continued from five. It came down. It continued from six. Probably I don't want five. I might want four. The minute I change it to four, see the data moves and it kind of starts with five from four. You don't have to manually change everything. It works through that document that it gave. Yeah. Once your 10 is done, it kind of repeats, of course. OK. Similarly, uh, one thing that I maybe I want to add an image now. Uh, what I do here is come here. Maybe I will put, you know, this. I want to add an image here. So I go, I have an images folder where I kind of downloaded 10 images. There's no sequence of the images and all. All I do is drag, put, oh, sorry. It changed all the 10. OK. Maybe, as I said, I don't want, uh, maybe I want to go back to 5 and uh, 5 by 2, first thing. So I worked on 1, but the data I changed in all 10 in a single go. Now, probably. I want to, you know, move the data from here. Okay. So first thing that I want to do is maybe this data is kind of, this space is kind of too much. I decreased it. Okay. It changed everywhere. Uh, maybe I want the title to be below this one. It is replacing everywhere. It is moving that. All right. Now there are certain limitations in this one. Okay. So when you copy, you know, when you're doing this, when you did this, you know, uh, the document had one to 10 information, 10 students and uh, paragraphs for 10. This is only one that we had. Okay. Now, maybe I am repeating it for the 11th one. If you notice, the minute the 10th is done, when you're actually coming back to the first one, whatever I change in this one, say 101 it changes in this one wherever it is it the minute it starts the cycle again it kind of changes there okay the other thing is okay now uh, 
Hey, yeah, what we did was we kind of had a button here. Uh, change it the way that you want. Maybe okay. Hold on. Let me do one thing. I'll kind of this and uh, the padding. Now, I change. Uh, yeah. I change this, it changes in this one. Similarly, again, uh, we have, uh, say, okay. It changes everywhere. Now again, because this this actually had just one text in it, okay. Whatever I change here, it changes everywhere. Okay, that is one limitation. It if it is one, just one that you are using, it kind of repeats throughout. Okay, I do understand. Eventually, we would be using components and everything, and probably you change the title in the component. It you know, text in the component, it does change here. Uh, but when you're using a repeat grid, the limitations are you can't have different components for, uh, uh, you know, in each uh, grid that you have. So here, let's say I have start maybe with black here, maybe I want to have something called as completed, but uh, have the button as green. That wouldn't work that those are certain limitations that we do have here okay let's say i in the repeat grid maybe i want to change it doesn't it changes throughout okay now maybe yeah i want to kind of do this start okay it changes it to start complete, start complete, start complete, whatever that you want. Okay. Now, this, the thing that I did, uh, this is one way of doing it. And the other way is probably, okay, I'll copy this group huh? from here to here. Other thing, I kind of grouped it. Okay. Now, even without creating the repeat grid, this still works. Okay. Maybe uh, I'm just changing it back for now. Okay. I'll remove this. Okay, now I did not create a repeat grid, but even then, I I place this here paragraph here score and this. Now I create a repeat grid. It still takes that information. Even before creating the repeat grid, I kind of copy pasted the data from, you know, I kind of dragged that uh, document. It still took that information. So this. Any questions? I'm more than happy to answer. Yes, KK. Yeah. So if I have, uh, I need uh, 10, uh, 10 blocks, I mean 10 cards, and in each row, I cannot uh, use four. Maybe there is a uh, uh, reduce of space or something there. So in that case, a fast row will be four. Sorry, come again. Yes, uh, I, I would like to say that I think I, 
so there is a there, there i need the 10 cards okay i don't okay. want to need more than 10 cards and mm -hmm. i have to set it as a in a row there will be a four due to some reduce of space or something like that mm -hmm. okay in that case if i repeat the grid so first mm -hmm. row will take four second row will take four and third row will take also four cards that but is how Hmm. That is a restriction that you have uh, mm -hmm. because, see, I can't delete, because it's in a repeat grid, I can't delete mm -hmm. this specific, uh, you know, cards that you want. Okay, so I, so I have to do it manually. Yeah. Repeat, how many, you know, it is going to repeat what you have in the first row, the number of mm -hmm. things that you have. So if you have four there, it is going to show four. Hmm. You can use equal, you know, what do you say, four by two or four by four or something. It will not give you uh, uh, like first two rows as four four and next row as two. Yes, yeah, so I have to. So so I have to delete the last two cards manually. You so can't delete. It. You can't delete okay. it. Okay, if okay, you delete okay. it, it will remove. See, if I the minute I delete this, it removes everywhere because it is a repeat grid. If mm. I specifically want to delete this uh, last two, I can't delete it. That's the reason. No, 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 no. If, no, if no, we no. do an if we do an group grid, then we can delete, right? Yes. If you now you know you kind of create you know the you have already created your uh, probably your art you know screen. Mm. Uh, see, I don't suggest doing uh, you know uh, ungrouping the repeat grid. Because tomorrow again, if you want to do some kind of change, maybe tomorrow the button changes, your button color changes. Okay. Mm. If you ungroup it, see, there the only way that you can do is one, you ungroup it and then probably delete these two. Yes. But now yes. The, the link between these things is gone. Whatever mm. change you do is only specific to that. Correct, correct. So tomorrow, if you if your text size changes, your button changes, it's mm -hmm. not going to change in the rest of the things. You have to manually do it again. So I don't suggest mm -hmm. doing it that way. The only option for such things is probably you go and uh, you know. If you it. can rename rename those groups, I do. Excluded, right? Okay. If that is the case. This is the easiest option that you can do if you yeah. don't want. Yes, yes, yes. So there's no, there's no naming, right? So it's see if you see inside it, I don't have any group. Mm -hmm. So there is no renaming of group or anything. It's a single, uh, you know, it's this is a single layered part that I have, and this group mm. is but a button. Mm. Yes, okay. yes, got it. So there's no renaming of these things. All right, thanks. Okay. And the thing is, you can use repeat grid inside a repeat grid as well. And you know, there are a lot of benefits, and it actually saves a lot of time when you're working. Mm. It's mm. manually changing it by see the, these 10 things that we did, we kind of did it in like less than five or four minutes, mm. probably. I did not even take long. Mm. Okay. Uh, Krishna uh, Praviran here. Mm -hmm. So, Krishna, uh, can I use multiple linking from this repeat grid? Yeah, yeah. You can, okay. Everything is a single button, right? Okay. Now you can have different links. Yeah. This will have a different link. Probably. Uh, let me create another artboard, probably. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So, Each can have a different link. Okay. Okay. And yeah, you can still do all that, uh, you know, triggers and everything, you, whatever trigger that you want. Maybe this is drag. Okay. Maybe I don't want, uh, you know, I just want it to be a voice, probably. Okay. Each will have their own properties for interaction. The only restriction that, as I said, you have is the colors are going to be the same or the sizes of them 
are going to be the same. So let's say here, this is 14 and I want to do 20. Everywhere it changes to 20. So if Can't I make it as a component, so then every, every grid uh, card is uh, as a, so as a component, right? Yeah, every, everything is going to show as a component. OK. Uh, hi, Krishna. This is Navrata. Mm -hmm. so whenever I am first, I am making a card as a component, and then I'm applying repeat grid. That time, mm -hmm. if I uh, can I change any button style or any text inside that? Uh, that I still have to check. I haven't tried that way. I can. Yeah, I was trying literally. So, which is why I stuck. I got stuck. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I'm asking here if it is possible. I think there is some restrictions. Uh, we yeah. cannot like. Uh, for uh, if you are creating a component with this one, and then uh, no, see when you are actually creating a component, you are still uh, when you are actually replicating it, it's just creating an instance of it, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So certain changes can be done to the instance, but rest it's still going to take what the properties are there for the parent. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. there are few limitations in the re repeat grid, uh, but you know it it still serves the purpose of you know working out quick uh, on the screens. Uh, having that stacking option is one of the best features that we actually have in XT. Uh, you know, uh, I'll just open one screen. So see. We have this, OK? Everything is under, uh, say, I kind of grouped everything. This is stack. And tomorrow, if some data changes, if you don't use stack, if you don't use stack, let's say, this is everything is manual. OK, this is a group, this is a group, this is a group. Now, say this is increasing, OK? maybe this width this height is increasing see you still manually have to go and move everything correct it's a lot of effort that you're going to put just select everything kind of create the stack option okay and now go and maybe you move up oh, sorry maybe that go i not correct yeah Good. What is this? Oh. This, this, this? I have this. Okay. Now I move this. It moves everything below it. Okay. Uh, the heat map, maybe the rectangle that I have. I, I am increasing it. You don't have to manually change. You don't have to manually move stuff. It auto adjusts with your uh, layout that you have, uh, you know, the spacing that you gave. You can have different spacing. So th this is using 45 pixels between each element. Maybe I want to have, for this, I want to have, uh, say, 45 after. Uh, for this, maybe I want to have 90. OK. So this before this is 90 and after this is 45. Maybe here I want 60. It still retains that information. Whatever you do, it still follows that only. So tomorrow, even if you are using a repeat grid and actually, let's say you're working on a table, you're you are using a repeat grid and creating the table. Maybe you have 10 rows. Uh, maybe you want to add another 10. If you actually use the stack and you know repeat the uh, table for another 10 rows, the data below it actually moves with it. And you don't have to redo it. You just have to move. Just do this part where you are doing this repeat grid. You get that point. Yes, so okay. KK uh, Arup here again. Mm -hmm. Can we have the option of uh, rearranging the cards in the repeat grid? So yes. if I want to place the second card to be placed in the uh, first position. Uh, no, in repeat grid, you can't. In repeat grid, it okay. doesn't work that way. But in stack, uh, we can't. 
stacking it does in stacking as a yes. should right so you can move your you can just move anything wherever you want yes yes, uh, yes, yes. i kind of had that wait hold on let me open that back so so let's say this is my you know this actually has a stacking uh, done okay mm -hmm. now maybe my this uh, card i had it had to be maybe at the end i just move it the rest yes, of them can move back maybe i want it here maybe i want to move two of them yes yes stacks for me that way all right any further questions i think I, these are the few things that i have next session probably we'll concentrate on few more shortcuts i have a lot more shortcuts that i want to show okay uh which i'm sure a lot of us don't use okay there are a lot of shortcuts which i want to show and a few more plugins uh, that i uh, came across so apart from that if you guys want any specific features to be show you know explain uh, yeah one thing we we will be concentrating on uh, components uh, in the next session components with nested components uh, that is one session that i'm going to take uh, creating components and nested components and all okay apart from that if you guys need specific features that you want me to concentrate on i can uh, you know do a session for that as well no i personally need the component session <laughs> yeah okay uh anybody has any other questions i'm more than happy to answer Oh, there is one XD query I have. Like, suppose I'm creating a square or any rectangle. Mm -hmm. I have given a border radius to it. After mm -hmm. some times, or I don't know what is that glitch, it converts that uh, rectangle uh, rectangular into a, some shape. That and is that because you kind of double click it. Okay. Uh, no, no, it converts that into a shape. Now you can't make it yeah. to. Yeah. You can't do it. But see, that it's not a glitch. It's actually uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you see this. So we have this one, right? So the minute you double click on it, right, it creates it into a path. That's it. Once it creates a path out of it, you uh, can't. So it it is right now a path, right? Yeah. Maybe. That I'm no, that I'm aware of. But it remains the into a shape. Now you can't do that. Yeah, you can't go back. Yeah. That's a glitch in uh, XD. Yes, XD. Yeah. So once it converts. So maybe here uh, I gave it as 30 and now I, you know, by mistake, it converted to path. Yes. You know, what you have to do is you did that and did this, it remains as path. So what, how, it's not actually a glitch, I would say, see, I double clicked, it is path without doing any changes. If I click somewhere else, it is going back to re that, that rectangle. Okay. But yes. once I select it and I do any kind of change, it it remains as a path. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. Got it. So will that be path in every cards? Yes. It's going to be same uh, throughout. Yeah. So I face this issue like while creating components. So it uh, it's a great mess on that part. Because mm. component level, but then again, you need to create a, another rectangle and do that. Okay. Yeah. It's mostly happen when you work uh, copy from other file. So it's happen. There are few issues with XD that we can't, uh, you know, uh, do anything about. It's like, you know, specifically uh, that occasionally once you open the file, like after ages, it's the dimensions are in points. Sometimes point five, you get those things. So, yeah, there are certain glitches, but we can't do anything about it. Any other questions? Okay, so this is my first session. So kind of, uh, uh, I did what I can. 
we'll try and keep more in detailed you know sessions eventually hey, th thanks krishna for the session there yeah. this is very useful uh i hope everyone had something new to learn out of this also my request is that if there are certain things which uh you guys have as a wish list in terms of you know something which needs to be clarified or understood or if you have difficulty uh, in xd then probably we can kind of uh, list it out and probably take it up in the next session so feel free to reach out to uh, krishna uh, because uh, he's compiling the list of things which uh, we believe can be taken up as part of you know uh, 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 developing our uh, skill set around adobe xd and more importantly i think one another thing is you know the ultimate intention is to kind of figure out how well we can manage our designs so it's not just about learning this tool but more about being able to you know fully utilize the tool to help us create let's say design systems or creating the mock ups or creating a proper interaction uh, interactive prototype so i guess uh, krishna at one point we'll also be talking about uh, creating animations and stuff right yeah Okay. And and see one of the reasons why I showed well, only one shortcut that is group thing, uh, that is con using command or uh, in Mac or control in uh, this thing is because a lot of us you know don't use groups to actually uh, properly uh, how do I say it uh, maintain your layers in the file. The reason being see it's not just you tomorrow eventually someone else might take over that project and those groupings the naming conventions for those groups have to be there okay and just because you are going to double click it and you are going to you know do multiple clicks you don't want to do it and you just ungroup it it only causes a problem for the rest of us okay uh, so that is the reason why that one shortcut that i showed which is used you know how many other groups that are there inside it just hold control and click on that layer that you want it actually takes you directly to there you don't have to click so many times so please do you know group your things according to elements according to section you know sections or cards properly group it give a naming convention so that it is easier for someone who's going to you know follow uh, your work eventually Hello. Yeah, okay. Uh, anybody has any questions? No, nothing from my side. No from my side. If there is anything in terms of, you know, uh, any specific thing which needs to be demoed or anything, let us know. Yes, so what okay. it already told that uh, the component will be the next session, so it will be helpful, I think, uh, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Components, components you know, the... Okay, sounds good. Then. So thank you all for the, coming for the session. I think we'll have another session planned very soon. Yeah, and okay. in this case, if you guys have any questions, you can uh, ping me as well. I'll, I'll clarify uh, from whatever we did. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. The nice thank session. You. Thank yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Thanks, Krishna. Bye bye.